book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 2, we read, okay, the second portion. This is the one to whom I will look, to the humble and contrite in spirit, and who trembles at my word. Praise the Lord. This is the one to whom I will look, to the humble and contrite in spirit, and who trembles at my word. Praise the Lord. So when we enter into this word of God session, right, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, right, we are a small group here, right? So when the Holy Spirit is talking to us through this unworthy sinner, what the Holy Spirit is asking each one of us to do is to have this disposition of heart, to have a humble and contrite spirit so that he can look at each one of us, right? And we should tremble at the words that are being spoken to us. And it is not the fear that we are talking about in this world. It is the reverence, it is the respect that we need to have for the words that are coming out of God's mouth. Because these are the words of God. Praise the Lord. Right? So for this evening, for this small group, the word of God that Jesus has given to share is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 14. Right? So when we started this prayer meeting, Brother Joby said that all our requests will be heard today. All our requests will be heard. That is a promise. That is a promise that Jesus has given us. Right? And that is for sure. Whatever Jesus has said will happen. Right? Praise the Lord. Whatever is written in this holy book will happen. Praise the Lord. Right? But there are certain things that we have to do to make sure that we achieve those promises. Right? And this is the verse that is kind of a prerequisite so that those petitions that we put in front of our Lord this evening will be heard. Because Lord Jesus wants to work in a mighty way in each one of our lives this evening, my dear brother, my sister in Christ. That is the reason why the Holy Spirit is asking us to do this this evening. Right? So Matthew, Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 says, if this is right after Jesus teaching us the Lord's Prayer, and Jesus right after that says, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Right? And next verse that I got is from the Gospel of Mark chapter 11 verse 25. Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 25. A lot of people know Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe and you will receive it. Right? That is a very popular verse. Everybody knows that. Everybody remembers that. This comes right after that. You will receive it, provided you do this. Whenever you stand praying, Forgive if you have anything against anyone. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Praise the Lord. Right? So when we forgive and then we pray from our heart, right? When we mean each and every word that comes out of our mouth. And even those prayers don't even have to come out of our mouth because Jesus listens to our heart. It is a conversation from our heart to Jesus' heart. That is prayer. Right? And that will be heard, my dear brother, my sister in Christ. And that is what we read in Mark eleven twenty four, 24. Right? Whatever you ask for in prayer... Believe and you will receive it. You will receive it. Provided when you stand in prayer, you forgive others 
who have trespassed against you praise the lord right again i just want us to go through all of these verses once right and then we can try and see what is it that we can do to achieve this grace right gospel of matthew chapter 18 verse 35 gospel of matthew chapter 18 verse 35 okay so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart do you know what the, jesus is talking about here jesus spent an entire time a sp- tem- spent some time explaining one entire parable to the people it is called the parable of the unforgiving servant praise the lord so if you look at gospel of matthew chapter 18 there is a whole passage about the parable of the unforgiving servant there we see a king who has forgiven a huge debt of a servant but what the servant does is he is not even able to forgive the debt a small debt of one of his fellow servants and what happens after that right that servant is thrown into prison and what jesus says is he will be there in that prison till he pays off the last penny praise the lord right there is different interpretations for that prison my dear brother my sister in christ right one of the interpretations is that that prison is that prison of unforgiveness that we have right because when we have unforgiveness towards somebody we lock ourselves in a prison my dear brothers and sisters in christ right we separate ourselves from god right one interpretation is that we will be in purgatory till we are cleansed right that is the most common interpretation right one of the other interpretations that i've heard is that we are putting ourselves in a prison right because we are separating ourselves from other people when we have unforgiveness towards some people we are separating ourselves from those people when we are not able to forgive others then we are separating ourselves from god because what has god done for us god has forgiven us unconditionally so many times praise the lord right so whenever somebody does something to you we always have to remember my dear brother my sister in christ okay i have to forgive because this is what god is doing for me praise the lord this is what jesus christ is doing for me every day praise the lord right because what we are doing is we are judging them by our means our measure right and whatever measure that we measure will be measured unto you this is again what jesus said praise the lord right when we sin we say okay we sin because we have weaknesses and jesus is so merciful because he understands our weakness and jesus forgives right but when somebody else hurts us we cannot f- understand the fact that that person might be hurting us because that person has a weakness praise the lord right what the holy spirit wants us to understand and w- what the holy spirit wants us to learn this evening is to have to ask jesus for that grace so that we can have this compassion towards our fellow beings my dear brother my sister in christ right people hurt us people trespass against us people sin against us because they are weak people are weak i am weak you are weak all of us are weak we have to forgive each other praise the lord and that is what we read in today's one of the readings in the in the from the letter to ephesians st paul's letter to ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 
right? Chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Right? See, I didn't make up these things, my dear brother, my sister in Christ. I am saying the things that St. Paul has already written in this holy book. Right? Inspired by the Holy Spirit, St. Paul has already said these things. We just need to search for these things and read it from this book. And that is also a verse in the Bible. Search and read in the holy book. Praise the Lord. Right? So you, if you are struggling to forgive somebody, if you are struggling to get along with somebody, my dear brother, my sister in Christ, look at Ephesians 4.32. Read Ephesians 4.32. St. Paul is saying, St. Paul is the one who established the most number of churches, my dear brother, my sister in Christ. He is the one who has worked with the most number of people. Right? So he has seen all of these things. People are the same. Even 2000 years back, people had these problems. People were weak then, people are weak today. Even at that time, there were issues in those churches. That is why St. Paul had to write these, this particular verse. Holy Spirit made St. Paul write this verse in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, be tender hearted, and forgive one another. How do we forgive? Just as God has forgiven you in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Right? Now, the last verse about forgiveness Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Forgive, forgive, forgive. This is what the Lord is saying. Praise the Lord. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying this evening. My dear brothers, my sisters in Christ. Right? And don't think that we are the only people who are struggling with forgiveness. Right? I struggle with forgiveness. Right? Our first Pope, Saint Peter, and that is written in this book. That is one beautiful thing about this book, my dear brother, my sister in Christ. People's weaknesses are written in this book. And that is clearly there. Right? If you go to again the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21 and 22, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, our first Pope, Saint Peter, he had this problem. That is why he went and asked Jesus, How many times should I forgive, Lord? People are again sinning against me all the time. How many times should I forgive? Why do you think Saint Peter went to Jesus and asked that question? Right? Because he was also struggling, my dear brother, my sister in Christ. He was also getting hurt. He was also, people were trespassing against him also. Right? So then he was also having this struggle. Right? Because the teachings of Jesus were forgive. Turn your other cheek when people are hitting you. Right? When you get time, yesterday's gospel is an amazing gospel that all of us have to read. We call ourselves Christian. That is the gospel that we are supposed to follow. Praise the Lord. Right? And there are people who have done it, my dear brother, my sister in Christ, human beings, Saint Mother Teresa, Saint Rita, right? So many people. I'm just giving one or two examples. Children. I won't name the name, you guys figure out who the name is, right? Famous people. Children, people have killed them. And even at the hospital, they'll say, okay, I'll forgive. Are we able to forgive people who have just hurt us with their words? Praise the Lord. That is what the Holy Spirit is asking us this evening. Right? Now, the same thing in the Gospel of Luke is a little bit different. Right? 
So when I saw this Gospel of Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 and 22, I suddenly remembered reading something different in Gospel of Luke. Because there it is a little bit different. So Gospel of Luke chapter 17 verses 3 and 4, the same thing is mentioned a little bit differently. Because Jesus says, forgive 77 times, right? 70 times 7. So the same thing in Gospel of Luke chapter 17 verses 3 and 4 says, be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. So it doesn't mean that whatever sin that they do, you have the authority. Jesus is giving you the opportunity to go and tell them that what you have done is offending you. Right? If you have the courage, if you have the humility, when somebody is offending you, my dear brother, my sister in Christ, Telling them that they are offending you is not pridefulness. That is not pride. That is humility. That is purity of heart. Praise the Lord. Right? Purity of heart is showing what is in your heart outside. That is purity of heart. Blessed are the pure of heart. You will see God. That is what Jesus said. You have to be pure of heart. Right? If you are having something inside and showing something outside, then you are not pure of heart. Praise the Lord. Right? But you have to do it in a humble way. I have failed in this. Most, a lot of people might have failed in this. Right? But we have to do it humbly. Right? When people offend us, we can tell them that, my dear brother, my sister, you are offending me. I am hurt. Please do not do that. Right? But then, right after that, what is said is, if that person repents and says sorry, you have to forgive. If that person repents and says sorry 70 times, forgive 77 times. Right? So now I am a little bit logical person, right? So then I started thinking, what if that person doesn't repent? And just say sorry. And do, don't I not have to forgive? Right? But then, all of a sudden, Lord took me to, we are all again Christians. We call ourselves Christians. We follow Christ. Praise the Lord. Right? What did Christ do? Gospel of Luke chapter 23 verse 34. That is the ultimate forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Right? Gospel of Luke chapter 23 verse 34 My dear brothers, my sisters in Christ There is nothing more than this that I have to say Jesus said when Jesus was nailed to the cross right, The Roman soldiers did not repent They were 100% they were sure what they were doing is right They were doing their duty Praise the Lord right? But what did Jesus do? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Praise the Lord. Right? This is the person that we follow. This is the person that we say we follow. Praise the Lord. Right? This is the person that we receive every day. Right? Now, Coming to the practical side of it, how do we get this grace, my dear brother, my sister in Christ? Right? Two things. One, every day when we receive Jesus, right? From His fullness we have received grace upon grace. Right? That is what we have written in our grace, our flyer. I don't know how many people have looked at it, but that is one of the verses that we have written. Right? From His fullness we have received grace upon grace. Right? We have Jesus in us. We sang that song right now. Right? Christ is enough for me. There is nothing more that we need. We have Christ in us. Right? When we receive Jesus, there is a beautiful prayer that John the Baptist said. He must increase. I must decrease. John chapter 3 verse 30. Right? I have to decrease. Jesus Christ in me has to increase. 
that is the only way in which we can live the sermon on the mount if we try to live the sermon on the mount by our own strength we will never make it my dear brother my sister in christ but if christ in us increases then that becomes an easy thing to do that is why jesus said take my yoke upon you because my yoke is light and my bur- my yoke is my burden is light right that is what jesus said because jesus will be there a yoke has two portions to it so he is not going to put that on us and walk away he will be there to carry that burden along with us and when jesus is carrying all of this with us if god is for us what can be against us my dear brother my sisters in christ right the second thing that what we can do right there was one person who came here immaculate i don't know how many people were here on september 5th or 6th right she had given a talk right she is another person who forgave all the people who killed her own family what she said was it was the blessed mother who helped her go through that journey to forgiveness right all that she did was say two prayers one is the holy rosary and the second one is the rosary to our the lady of sorrows right and that is all i have to say my dear brother my sister in christ and as i said this is not me talking to you this is the holy spirit talking to me and to all of us this small group gathered here right and as brother jobi said when we stand here when we enter into this moments of prayer intercession prayer when we offer our petitions in front of our lord right doesn't matter what people have done to us doesn't matter whether they will repent or not doesn't matter whether they'll do the same thing tomorrow right there is one beautiful saint called saint rita right you should read her story right i don't know how many people know that story right so for some people right saint john paul the second is another person who forgave the person who tried to kill him right that's a huge forgiveness right but for me when i look at it that is one time grace to some extent that person tried to kill him he was not trying to kill saint john paul ii every day right but there are people who are trying to kill their spouses beat their spouses every day right and saint rita was one of those kind of people and then saint rita instead of praying for that person to die so that she can come out of all this suffering she used to offer all those sufferings for that person's conversion my dear brother my sister in christ that is the kind of life that we are called to that is the kind of lives that we have to look up to praise the lord right and that is when we get to the holiness of saint francis assisi and all that right this is not related but saint francis of assisi and all that had reached such a level of holiness that i don't know what to even say about saint francis of assisi and all that right there was a, a small video or something that i saw when he was saying when there was a guy who was being taken to prison and saint francis of assisi's disciple was saying see what kind of a bad person that is he killed somebody and now he's being taken to prison so saint francis of assisi was looking down and didn't even say anything right after some time when he raised his head he was crying saint francis of assisi was crying and do you know what saint francis of assisi said saint francis of assisi said that is saint francis of assisi if it had not been for the grace of christ that is ultimate humility my dear brother my sister in christ that is when saint francis of assisi was living a life of ultimate holiness and what he is saying is none of this is my work none of this is me all of this is grace right 
that is the level of holiness that we have to aim for and for that forgiveness is the starting point this is the starting point my dear brother my sister in christ and that is what the holy spirit is asking us to do right so when we enter into this anointing prayers into this intercession prayers what the holy spirit is asking us to do this evening right is to forgive 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 whatever we have right offer it to the lord as we as we did as we were praying during our pr- praise and worship right offer everything to christ right we have the cross in front of us offer it to the cross there is nothing that jesus cannot heal my dear brother my sister in christ offer it to the cross and then you offer your petition to our lord everything will be answered and with that i close all glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen